Have you ever been followed when you're all alone late at night? Myself, I have a naturally stocky, well-built, muscular appearance, and I'm a man, so I'm not the kind of person that anyone would naturally choose to mess with. What about you? Has anyone followed you at night? How did you feel? What happened in the end? Well, those are the questions that tonight's story poses, in a very bizarre and unusual way, I should add. Another one from Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so you could share your stories with me and I could read them all for you. So, it's a beautiful night for a campfire. Won't you come join me? Because I've got a little story to tell you and it goes something like this. I have a story from when I was in college not long ago. And it was how I met a man like none I'd ever met before. Let me tell you the story of how I met him. It all started when I left for university. I got into a pretty good school out west. Not my number one pick, but well, beggars can't be choosers. The campus was large enough, but not too big to get lost on. And it was close enough to a lively city where some good nights could be had and make it back to campus in time for a little bit of rest before classes in the morning. And I lucked out because I had a roommate but he wasn't going to be there until the second semester, so I had the dorm all to myself for the first semester. While I was there, I needed a part-time job, and the only option I had was the night shift because of the schedule of my classes. I found a job where I could work the night shift as a cook at a diner between the campus and the city, and because of its location, I didn't need to take the bus there because it was close enough to walk to and from. I thought it was perfect. I ended classes around 8pm, would walk to work, head back to the dorms around 8am and rest before classes started in the afternoon. It was only for a semester, then I could adjust my classes so I could have a normal schedule. I'll make it work. Just one semester. That's as long as I've got to put up with this and then I'm done, I thought to myself. The first night, I finished classes and headed to work for training and orientation at my new job. Met my boss, a man who not only smelled like he'd worked at the restaurant for years, but had exclusively eaten at the restaurant too. He gave me a wave and greeted me as I entered the kitchen. Hey there, James, right? He asked in a deep, booming voice. Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, sir. I corrected myself quickly. Ah, uh, I don't need all that yes, sir, no, sir bullshit. This looked like the military to you. We serve food here, son. It's not that complicated, and there isn't much to it, he said in a jovial manner. He started walking farther back into the kitchen, as he addressed the only two others working there. Over there's Marcy. She's our head cook, he said, pointing to a girl with dyed black hair, about my age, in the back of the kitchen. You won't get much out of that, and just over there, he said, pointing to the front of the restaurant at a middle-aged man who looked like he'd rather be anywhere else. That's Jeremiah. He's our only server here. That's about all it takes for us to keep the place running. Don't need much. Nope, not much at all, he said. Well, that concludes the grand tour. Mars will show you your job and teach you all your shit. Good luck, son, and have a good night, he said as he left through the double doors of the kitchen and out of the diner. I walked over to where Marcy was on her phone and asked what I needed to do to start work. Does it look like anyone's here to cook for? Just hurry up and wait, she said quickly, while never looking up from her phone. Well, when do we get customers? What am I supposed to do? I asked, still not knowing what my job entailed. If someone comes in, which might be one person during the entire night shift. You get the order from Jerry, cook the order from Jerry, give the food to Jerry. Well, it's not rocket surgery, she said, annoyed for having to answer my question. I sat around in the back with Marcy for the remainder of my shift. She instructed me how to prepare the food when a couple of people stumbled in around 2 and 3 a.m., then told me I was good to go around 6. She'd take care of the rest of the work. That wouldn't even need two people to cook. I left the diner and started walking back towards the campus. It was maybe a 15-minute commute back by foot, 
but because of an obvious lack of streetlights in this direction, it felt much longer. I got back to the dorm room and was greeted by a smell of something rotting. Too tired to ask anyone about it, and with not long to sleep before class starts, I ignored it and tried to fall asleep as quickly as I could. I went to work again the next day, falling into a routine, as was let off even earlier this time, around 2.30, maybe because I think Marcy didn't want to put up with my chatty personality, and because we'd had no business all night. I don't even know how the hell this place stays open. Maybe they get a lot of service during the day. Started walking home once again. But this time, another person was following me, about 30 meters back, matching my pace. It looked to be a man in a large coat that went down to his knees and sported some large boots and gloves. I couldn't see his face because of how little light there was at the time. But there was a bad smell resonating from him that I could smell even from here. Hmm. Why the hell is anyone out here this late at night? I asked myself, wondering what the stranger could want with me. Creeped out by the man, and fearing for my safety, I increased my pace and split off down a side road toward a gas station. The man continued to follow, and when I entered the station, the man didn't even hesitate and walked right by and on his way. I guess he wasn't following me after all. Must have also been coming from somewhere. I sighed as I looked around the empty convenience store. Can I help you with anything, sir? A young woman asked from the counter. No, just here to use the restroom, I responded quickly. After faking use of the restroom, so not to make the cashier suspicious of me, I left the convenience store and headed back on my normal route. As soon as I left, the smell was gone, as was the man. I walked not twenty meters down my street, when another man fell in line right behind me, out of nowhere. What the fuck is going on tonight? I thought, as this was some coincidence. Three people, all walking down the same road at three in the morning. Oi, stranger, the man behind me yelled. I turned around to see the second man jogging up to catch up with me. Still confused, I just stood there until he reached me. He looked to be only a little older than me, maybe twenty-five or so, and he had a leather jacket and some fingerless gloves on. Ahoy, what the fuck? <laughs> What's with people around here with gloves, I wondered. Uh, I... Um, do I know you? I stammered, wondering what he wanted to talk to me about at this hour, and here of all places. Oh, I would hope you don't know me. You haven't seen somebody else walking around these here parts, have you? Large man. Big coat, gloves, awful smell, he asked, describing the man that was behind me earlier. Yeah, you know him? I asked the man. No, um, not yet at least. Been trying to get in touch with him for some time now, but he's a tricky one to get hold of. You know the type, yeah? Said the man, winking at me and speaking in the same way my boss usually spoke to me. Oh, oh um, okay, yeah, he went down the road that branched off right next to the gas station, a bit back, um, if I remember correctly, I said, gesturing the way I'd come. Many thanks, stranger. You have a wonderful night and good luck with college. I know it can get stressful when you got to balance the night shift and school at all at once, he said, as he turned around and sprinted off in the direction the other man had gone. What the actual fuck had just happened, I thought. How the hell did he know I was in college? Well, I was walking in the direction of the campus. Oh, fuck it, you know, people are weird. Well, freaked out from both encounters. I returned to my dorm as quickly as I could. I got inside to be greeted with the smell, not of something rotting, but a very strong scent of bleach. What the fuck? Do the dorms have a cleaning crew now? Again, disturbed by something once again, I made sure my door was locked and tried to block out what had happened this morning and get some sleep while I could. 
because I'd gotten off work early. I woke up with a couple of hours to spare before class and decided I should go out and do something for a change. I met up with a few guys from my history class, and we went out, smoked a joint or two, and then drove around town. One of them was old enough to get some drinks, and they said they were throwing a party later tonight, asked if I wanted to go. I said a lot of people would be there, and seeing how nobody really knew me, it'd be good to get out and, well, get out and meet some people. I told them I had work and couldn't make it, but they convinced me to request off and go to the party with them. I got back to campus with some time to spare before classes, headed back to my dorm and called work. I was greeted with Marcy's monotone voice on the other end. What do you want, James? She asked right after picking up. How do you know it was me and not a customer? I asked her. Nobody calls us. Everyone who comes here knows what they want, and everyone else is here, so you're the only person who could call us. So, what do you want? Trying to skip out on work? She asked in a know-it-all tone. Well... I was going to ask if... Yeah, don't come in. We don't need you. Well, they might, but I'll be fine. Have fun with whatever, she said quickly and hung up the phone as soon as she'd finished speaking. Was that even her call to make? I wondered. Well, at least I got to go to the party tonight. I went to classes that day and then prepared for the party that night. In my dorm, I went to use the bathroom that was connected with the room next door and was greeted by a small Asian kid, younger than me, and maybe shorter than five foot five, standing in the doorway at the other end of the bathroom. Who the hell are you? Who the fuck are you? We said in unison. Jinx, he said. Now, answer my question. I'm in the room right here. And you are? I asked. Christopher. And I reside in that room. And you are? He said, gesturing to the other door at the other end of the bathroom, and then to me. Oh, James, so I kind of have a roommate, I said. Well, I just needed to use the bathroom. Yes, roommate of sorts, because I have to put up with the things you do. Is that you making that smell every night? He asked, looking up at me. No, I was wondering what that was myself, I responded. Hmm. Okay, then. I'll need to dig deeper into this. Well, you have fun with that, I said back. Well, try doing what you did the first time. That cleaned it up for a little while. Do that again, he said, as he walked out and closed the door to his room behind him. I wasn't the one that did that, but he was gone before I could even respond. What the hell is going on here? Every day things are getting weirder and weirder. I showered and got ready to leave, and left for the address my friends had given me. I walked to a house a few minutes off campus, and in a fairly nice neighborhood. Parties aren't really my thing, but it is a good way of meeting people. I stayed there for a few hours, talked with some new people, and had a good time. I got a little fucked up, but hey, that's what happens in college. When it got to around 1am, I decided to call it a night and head back and prepare myself for the massive hangover I'd have the next day. I left the place saying goodbye again to a few people on the way out, and headed back in the direction of campus. About five minutes into the wall back, somebody was on my walk once again. Jeez, can't people leave me alone for just ten minutes? I glanced back to recognize the first man from the previous night. Oh shit. What's he doing here? This walk was on the other side of campus from my work, so this man shouldn't be here. He was definitely following me now, no doubt about it. I increased my pace. Only a few minutes from campus, and then I could call campus police and tell them the problem. I kept gradually getting faster, and the man was keeping my pace, no problem. I then broke into a drunken jog, and the man was able to keep up with me all the while still walking. Jeez, what the fuck? Shit. I started booking it. I didn't have to look back, because I knew he was right there. Just then, when I thought I couldn't run any longer, 
A car horn sounded in the road to my right, and one of my friends from class was in a pickup truck next to me. Without even asking, I ran over and hopped into his car. You were running like someone was trying to kill you. What's up with you? He asked, laughing. He didn't see that guy behind me. What are you talking about? He said, glancing back to see nobody there. All right, somebody slipped you something at the party. <laughs> Just relax, I'll get you back, man. He said, laughing as he started the car and drove back to campus. I swear, there was a guy there. He was running after me. I said in between breaths. Relax, man. Jeez, you're tripping so hard right now. He said, laughing again. He dropped me off back at my dorm and told me to get some rest and sleep it off. I walked up to my dorm and threw open the door to my room. The smell was back, and I'm sure Christopher next door was losing his shit over it, but I didn't really care enough to try and find the source. I threw myself onto the mattress, not even bothering to take my clothes off. The smell was so strong I could barely go to sleep. But blocking it out of my mind, I fell eventually into a drunken sleep. I was woken up by a loud banging at my door and glanced at my alarm clock to see the time. 3.30 a.m. Who the hell is knocking at my door at 3 in the morning? I asked myself and stood up all wobbly on my legs towards the door to my room. I unlocked my door and opened it a little to peek into the hall. And in the hall was the man in the leather jacket. What do you want with me? How'd you find me? Stay away from me or I'm calling the cops, I said, trying to slam the door closed. He threw his boot in the door and threw it open. Relax, man. I'm not here for you. He jumped inside, closed the door behind him, pulled out a handgun, and started searching the room frantically. Shit. Maybe someone had slipped me something at that party. This cannot be fucking real. I thought, as I watched the man search every inch of the place, too afraid to say anything to him. Well, shit. I saw him come from... He said quietly to himself, trailing off. Aha! He yelled aloud, like someone who'd just got an idea for a new invention. He opened the door to the bathroom weapon drawn. Looked around, not satisfied. Len looked at the door to the other end. He tried the handle, but it was locked, so he stepped back and kicked the door open with his foot. He charged into the room, and I followed out of curiosity and peeked into the other kid's room. In the room was the bloody remains of Christopher, blood and organs splattered over the walls and floor. The man in the leather jacket glanced at the body, and then back to the room. He stopped and listened. I distinctly heard two other people breathing. Somebody else was in the room with us. Out of nowhere, a man jumped out of the shadows and onto the man in the jacket. He knocked the gun out of his hand and tried to stab him with a blade he had in his hand. The two fought on the ground for a minute. Then I recognized him as the man that had tried hunting me down earlier that night. I watched from the doorway of the bathroom, still thinking I was hallucinating the whole thing. The man in the leather jacket kicked the bloodied man off him and back onto the bloody mess of what used to be Christopher. The man in the jacket got up and charged him, knocking the both of them into the window of the room, shattering it as they fell three stories down. The whole thing happened in less than a minute from him entering my room. I stood there, shocked. I couldn't tell what was real or not anymore. I walked over to the shattered window and looked out over the ledge. There was a large bloody stain on the ground, but nobody was there. Just a pile of broken glass littering the sidewalk below. The scene around me wasn't much better. I felt sick to my stomach and ran to the bathroom and proceeded to puke out anything I'd had that day. Just then, another knocking sounded at my door. I walked over to my door 
still in shock about what had transpired. Scared to open the door, I just sat there and stared at it. The knocking sounded again, and I recognized it as the same knocking from just a minute ago. I opened the door once more to have the man in the jacket let himself in. I sat there, not believing my eyes anymore at this point. Well, that was quick and to the point. Mike Jones, at your service, he said, extending his hand to me, and then retracting it, noticing I was caked in blood. Yeah, sorry about all that. Just go back to bed. I'll take care of what happened over there, he said, pointing to the mess in the next room over. What the fuck just happened? Who are you? I told you. I'm Mike Jones, monster hunter extraordinaire. I hunt the things that hunt you, he said, handing me a business card. I just sat there, staring at him, still unmoving, still thinking all of this was just some fucked up drug trip. And what just happened is that man back there got possessed by a demon, and then went on a killing spree of sorts, and you and your little pal on the walls back there were that thing's next targets. I'm glad I got here in time, eh? Ooh, he put up a fight. That was a fun one. Goddamn demons. <sighs> Smell bad, though, he said, letting out a small chuckle. <sighs> You'd think they'd have the decency to shower if you're in the same body for weeks on end, he said, poking me with his elbow. He was in here a couple of times before, so I took the liberty of cleaning up after him when you were out. Well, I better do the worst part of my job and fix all this mess. Oh, if you ever need me again, you call that number right there, he said, pointing to the card. And I'll come fix any problems that may be bothering you. Well, let's just hope that if I see you again, I won't be called to save someone from a possessed version of you, he said, laughing, as he casually walked out of the room and into the other. I awoke in the morning, remembering the weird drug trip I'd had last night. It must have messed with my dreams, because... I don't even remember half of what had happened. Must have been the alcohol, I said, as I stood up and felt the hammering headache immediately. I remembered what I'd seen in the other room, and darted over there as fast as I could, only to find... nothing. It looked like nobody had ever been there. I walked back to my room confused, because I vividly remember meeting that other kid that had lived there. Couldn't quite place together all the puzzle pieces to make them fit until I saw it. On my dresser was a small white business card with a phone number on it and the card said Mike Jones, Monster Hunter Extraordinaire. I hunt things down before they hunt you down. So if you have any anecdotes about being followed at night and um, how it turned out, feel free to share them in the comment section below. I will be taking special care to read them all on this video. Well, I do every time, but don't always have as much time as I want to reply. But trust me, I do read all the comments. Well, it's another week is over. I'll be back again with you on Monday with a longer story. I'm not quite sure what yet, but something that'll keep you busy. <laughs> Until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook, come chat with me on Twitter, listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud, drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt, and, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, 
Send it to Dr. Creepin's vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>